Ran Unix L, this trim range function, which means that it will only include stuff that has data, otherwise it will just return blank until that. And then it will change when something is added here. For example, fives get added there. And I'm also gonna show you how to do it with this, with a brand new notation that you can put this dot in front of or after the colon to do kind of the same thing. My name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, etc. And I love talking about this stuff, especially the new stuff. So often what happens is you want to create a template that people can fill in future data for, but they don't have to redo or drag down the formulas. So this is something that I use quite a lot. So let me duplicate this worksheet and I'm actually going to delete this. By the way, if you just want a copy of this worksheet, you can find my files on the link in the description. So what I would usually do would be equals this one plus this one. This is the kind of bad way of doing it. And then you would drag it down like this. Now, what I used to do to fix it is I used to do equals if this one equals blank. The way to do blanks is two things like this, then return blank, otherwise return this one plus this one. And this would work well. This would be a kind of elegant solution to do the same thing. Then I can drag it down as far as I want and it will show me a blank. Now, if I want to do it using the new method, what I can do is I can do trim range. So trim range, and then I can say this column plus trim range, this column. And then it will do it like that. But note that if I put something in the middle, then this one will give me the right answer in the non-elegant way. This one will give me the right answer in the elegant way. We're gonna say this if equals blank, and this is with trim range. So yeah, at the time, the most elegant solution is definitely this one, but it could be in a lot of the cases that you can't have one filled without the other one, in which case it would be fine and it would work well in both instances. Now, uh, the other way that you can use this, and my example is I'm gonna use uh, XLOOKUP. You're still using VLOOKUP, then you're definitely wrong because XLOOKUP is better in every way. Equals X lookup and then lookup value is this cell, comma, lookup array is going to be this column. And I'm just gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do at, use F4, comma, and then return range is going to be this one, F4. Close my brackets, and then I have this. I can drag it down. And then it will just give me an A if there is no city there. Also give me an A if there's no city on the list, like London, but more importantly, it will just not give me an answer and give me an unelegant solution like this. So again, I would sometimes use this. If that equals that, then blank otherwise and do the XLOOKUP function here. But you can now do it with trim range. It equals XLOOKUP. And then my lookup value is going to be trim range. And I'm actually going to refer to all of it right until that. And then I'm going to close my brackets, and then lookup array is going to be this column, and return array is going to be this column. And note that I don't actually have to put my dollar signs or use F4 to lock that in, because I'm just doing it in the topmost cell. And if I was to add a new thing here, then it would give me the answer that. I could kind of do the same thing without locking it in if I go back and I did it for all of this. And I did lookup array is going to be this one and return array is going to be this one. This will work without using F4, but yeah, I have to delete that because it's a spill range, but it will give me the non-elegant solution. And you become a lot less fluid once you have the spill range as if you want to type in something underneath to offset that. Uh, the spill ranges do also come up as an issue here. So if I did have some text here, then it would give me this. That essentially means I'm trying to spill into it, but here I have something that is intercepting me. So for example, if I had some data in, in this cell and I added in some new ones, let's just copy this one down two times. So one time it's fine. Second time it would give me that spill error. Now, the other way that you can do the same thing, a brand new other feature is you can get to the trim range using dot notation. So I can write equals xlookup and I can say instead of that trim range, I can select this data, but I can put in a dot 
before and after the colon, and that is the same as trim range. You can also put just before, just after. I'll explain that in a little bit. And then the lookup array is going to be here, and the return array is going to be here. Again, no need for F4, which we usually do need. And if I add in something new, so for example, Phnom pen. I live in Cambodia, so often that's why I often use these in my examples. It will give me the answer there. Perfect. Great. So what does it mean if you do it in one but not the other one? Well, if I do it in this one and remove it afterwards, then it will still give me the NA error because it's essentially doing it to expand automatically above but not below. So usually you would want below or at the end of the rings. also works right to left. But if I was to, for example, do it like this, and let's say that I had it some new data, so I'm going to insert, and let's say here that I actually start not on A7, I start like that. Then, yeah, I guess, That will give me here. Okay, so if I was to bin a dot there before, it would essentially jump up uh, and just start from here because this is where I have the city column and city is not a word in there. Now, if I was to do this from A22, which has the titles as well, then it would give me country over that. You have trim mean and trim range and just trim. Trim, the first one, will remove any spaces before or after or reduce your spaces in between text to one. That's one that I use quite a lot. Trim mean is kind of an average thing that you can calculate the average excluding outliers. That's a statistical thing. And trim range is this one. They're actually all very, very different use cases. <laughs> so you have row trim mode and call trim mode. So for example, I can say equals trim range of this. And then I can say, what am I doing? So in the row, do I want leading or trailing? That's a similar to the dot before or after or both. That's a default. And also in the column, you can have the same thing because this works on horizontal things. So if I was to, for example, let's just take these two and copy them. And let's add in a new worksheet and let's a special and transpose like that. I could say equals trim range of all of this like that. And that would still just give me how it looks like that. Yeah. So, and the column options would change that. Now, this could also be useful, for example, if you have a pivot table. And you want to do city and males like this, for example. And yeah, I gave it too big, so you have the blank there. But let's say that I want to put this in a map. Well, your map charts do not work with pivot tables, but you could do equals trim range of all of this and it automatically expands and it will now allow you to do this in the map chart. And note that it does amend to this. It could also work with slices if you want to. So I could uh, take the date and add as timeline if I want to. Let's add in months. Now the place you might want to use it is in some ifs. I could do equals some ifs. And I have my sum range, which is going to be, let's say, M for males. And then let's say my criteria range is going to be this one. And my criteria is going to be all of these, like that. And then I get it showing me with those zeros, which is not ideal. But if I put a trim range here, then kind of works quite well, which is good. I did find some things that didn't quite work. So for example, if I do equals this one 
plus this one. But then I do the dots. Probably just need them afterwards, but just to show you that it doesn't really work either way, it is going to give me a value error. Not sure why, because that should have the same effect as this, but yeah, that's what it's giving me for now. Remember that we did this to return two speech marks, which is the empty string. Well, trim range doesn't seem to work on that. So if I do equals trim range on all of these, just select that, close my brackets, and it will return still empty, but it does show the blue outline around the extras. So just something to be aware of. By the way, for people that don't have trim range, if you still want this similar kind of effect, then I would really recommend using this format as tables feature. So it is in the home tab here, because what this does is a, a lot of things. It does a lot of things. For example, it adds filters, it does automate formatting. If I add total, this will copy the formatting. But if I do equals this one plus this one, it does a completely different notation and it goes until the end. And then if I add in some new stuff, then it will automatically expand to see that. Now, tables are not always usable. If you use things like merge cells and headers, which I strongly advocate to not use, but they could cause issues like that. Or if you have dynamic arrays, they don't really work in tables. And that's why you might want to use this trim range as well as a couple of other reasons I've shown you in this video. All right, well, I hope that helps. My name is David Benama. I have tons of videos on this stuff, especially the new stuff. Thanks for watching.